On this day, October 4th, 1830, Belgium declares its independence from the Kingdom of the Netherlands. Now, Belgium is not the most interesting country in the world, but it isn't the most boring. They obviously have their chocolate and their waffles and their beer. They have some beautiful cities, Bruges and Ghent and even Brussels in a way. But it has been at the crossroads of European history pretty much since its foundation. Now, how did this revolution begin? It's tied to French radicals. The July Revolution had already taken place in Paris. Charles X had been overthrown, he had abdicated and fled to England. The Orleanist Louis Philippe had become king in, it, in its place, and the French radicals weren't just happy with getting rid of the Bourbon regime in Paris, they also wanted to cause trouble in what they thought was fertile ground. I don't know what exactly their aims were. Perhaps they were hoping to create another revolution in France to create a large new French Republic. It is interesting that it happened, started to happen just a month after the July Revolution. In August, riots had begun. There are claims that French radicals had infiltrated the Netherlands and had helped cause this. Whatever the cause, the result was the establishment of a new kingdom, the Kingdom of Belgium. The word taken from the old tribe, the Belgae, who Caesar himself had conquered and brought to heel many years before. Probably a people completely unrelated to the modern Belgians. However, they took the name. Because as is the case with so much about Belgium, much of it is invented, made up, or fabricated. This little nation, state is probably a more accurate word, was created because the British, the Austrians, the Russians, and the Prussians did not want the French to get a hold of it. They would have preferred the Dutch to remain in control, but you can't force a people forever. The South was united only by its Catholicism. But once independence has been achieved, the French ruling class started to lord it over their Flemish peasants and working class. So already from the beginning, Belgium was split. And that split became even more defined as time went on. The Flemish language, very closely related to Dutch, wasn't even legalized until after the Second World War. French was the only language of Belgium. And now, oddly enough, because religion isn't a unifier anymore, language, culture, and ethne being far more important, there are now many Flemish that want to become either independent or to join the Kingdom of the Netherlands. And similarly, there are many Walloons who like the idea of becoming a part of France. So, this little artificial state is only held together because entropy. No one really has the guts to actually go for it. And when they do, the government bans the party. So the Vlaams block it started getting very popular and powerful, and then it was banned. So then they changed the name and became Vlaams Belang. 
So every time they're thrown back, they just come back again. And as we've seen over the past couple of years, it's not unusual for this little artificial construct to go without a government for more than a year. And somehow, the country just muddles along. Perhaps it's better that way. So, as we know, Belgium became independent, and its independence, and its sovereignty, and its neutrality was guaranteed in London by the British. All the signatories similarly agreed to this. The Prussians, the Austrians, the Russians, the French, as well as the British. As we know, in 1914, one of the first things Germany did was to violate that guarantee. And Britain really had no excuse at that point not to declare war on Germany. It was an old treaty. Many people, including the Germans, called it a scrap of paper. But for many, it was honor that brought them to war. As we know, honor is never the only reason, but it's a good excuse. For a public in Britain that did not want to get involved, when they said, we guaranteed Belgium's neutrality and independence, and look at what those horrible Germans are doing to the poor, innocent Belgian civilians at the moment. It swayed many people. And Belgium and its occupation became a large part of the propaganda of the Allies. And as you know, there was a repeat to this during the Second World War. Although this time the Netherlands didn't escape as they did in the First World War. German forces swept through the Netherlands, Belgium and Luxembourg before finally overtaking France. This time, the Belgian king remained in Brussels. And after the war, that decision was quite controversial. And then, since then, we've had the problem of Flemish separatism and Flemish wealth, as they have become the wealthiest part of the Netherlands of Netherlands, of Belgium. So, this little artificial state that was created back in 1830 because of a couple of crazy radicals from Paris, French radicals causing trouble as they always do, has managed somehow to stumble along and even do okay. It's got a good standard of living. Its politics isn't terribly stable, but it's not violent. It had a little bit of an empire, the Congo. And it was involved as an ally in both world wars. And now in the EU. So, on this day, Belgium declared its independence from the Kingdom of the Netherlands. 4th of October. 1830.